like to film outdoors because the natural light is great, apart from the sun in my eyes, um, and I don't have to bother with uh, lighting indoors, so that's my easy way out. But there seems to be a compromise where I get background sounds that interfere with my recordings, and today is no exception. I'm out on the balcony, no dogs, no birds flying over, but there's a lot of machine noise going on down on the street. Uh, they're cutting up the pavement, basically. <laughs> uh, let me be more specific about that. Um, they started out by drawing two parallel blue lines down the pavement, pavement, so obviously marking out something that was below the surface. They dug four deep chambers um, spaced out along our street. Um, and if you look down into the bottom of those chambers, you can see a pipe. I'm guessing it's a sewage pipe. And then they started cutting the blue along the blue dotted lines. Reminds me of something as a blue Peter. Um, and the noise of that machine is the biggest noise of all. It isn't currently cutting at the moment, so you're standing a chance of hearing me. If it starts up again, I'll have to give up. Um, so this machine cuts out these channels. Uh, inside the chambers, they have started to build uh, down uh, with bricks. So they're obviously going to be permanent chambers with a, an inspection hatch on top. So that's going on in Costa Zahara 1 outside. It's going to affect the other buildings across the way, like Costa Caribe 3. This is a noisy street, and it's been a pretty noisy week sitting out here. That doesn't mean I haven't been doing it. I've got the sun on me, what else could you want this time of year? So here I am at the back of the apartment in Spain uh, in the post-production room I created a few months back and today I'm going to talk about Abby. I gave her a Canon compact camera last year and we did a series of videos on YouTube where I showed her how it worked, um, where the lens was and how you adjusted it. Showed her about the importance of stability and gave her a little mini tripod. Apparently that's now broken but I've just found another one here in Spain so I'll bring that home for you Abby. And I also then talked about framing the picture and I stood in the front garden in my slippers and told her to make sure that she had me framed correctly so that you couldn't see how unweeded the garden was and the fact that I was wearing slippers. So she decided off her own bat, and this uh, Abby's 11 by the way, um, that on Halloween she was going to do a video report for the Maythorn Monthly. She wanted it to be on the 5th of November one. Unfortunately that didn't really work out. But Here's a couple of the techniques she got right. Uh, first of all, before she set out for the night, she did a little monologue, the sort of thing I'm doing now, to introduce what was going on. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Mayfield Monthly. I'm Abby, and today I'm going to be vlogging a bit, and maybe a bit tomorrow. I'm going to my friends for a sleepover, but I need to go and get a pumpkin, so me and my friend can do some carving pumpkins. So I'm gonna see you guys when I am ready, and I'm in the car and on my way to the shop to get my pumpkin. She then recorded an extra bit in the car when she was waiting to take off. Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know that I'm on my way, nearly. Just waiting for my mum to get in the car, she's nearly there. They set off. They couldn't go to people's houses with the camera because that's private property and you can't film on private property without the permission. We are including Ari but we're talking about our sleepover as well because we're going to be filming at night. The two lessons that um, can be learned from this, in general, the things in front of the camera move, things and people, the camera stays still. And the second thing is that you must tell a story. So they've got nothing of any interest in frame, just a load of screaming, shouting, and faces moving everywhere. Okay, they didn't have a tripod uh, or anything. If you're in a, a playground, you can probably find um, a bench or a picnic table, or a litter bin even, which has got a flat top, put the camera on it, perform in front of it. 
they just put it on the ground. That was fine because for the first time in their video, and I've been watching it for half an hour, I could see that they were in a playground for the first time again. I could see the thing they were on, which until this point I hadn't known what it was. So they got there in the end with a few shots that we can show you. They're just really, really tired, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Back at Marina Door, the Edificio Miramar is moving on at a pace. Uh, most of the pictures that I'll be showing you at the moment have long shadows in them because the sun is low this time of year. But you can see from these pictures that the building work is continuing and they're now well out of the ground. Moving on to another familiar part of the resort, for those who visited Marina Door, you'll uh, come over the bridge on the River Chinchilla and you'll be familiar with this obstacle, I mean bridge across the road. Um, they're digging up all around this area now to create a new roundabout, so next time you come you'll probably find you'll have to navigate differently if you drive yourself along. Uh, at the moment there are a few diversions and lots of excavation. No doubt in a couple of months we'll be able to show you the completed project. And back to our street where you have all the commercial businesses have moved in, uh, mostly property businesses. Uh, a quick flick through to uh, remind you of who they are and to tell you that Dan S. Danny's told me that he's installing a key cutting machine in the new year so you'll be able to go straight across to him and have your keys cut. Most of the units here are the same. The Panaderia isn't open this time of year although its signs are still on the wall and there's a new one at the right hand end of Costa Zahar 1 
Uh, just past B3 and the Azahar apartment rentals, there's now CCI. Apparently they're the company who've been selling a lot of the commercial units here to these other businesses. So we talk a lot about the uh, camera work that uh, are necessary to make a good video, but the sound is extremely important. I've struggled with it, and different microphones, different acoustics, wind noise, all sorts of things. The other aspect of sound is the background music, because it kind of... If you watch a, a video that's got no background music on it, and then watch it with background music, you'll see what the difference is. I can't really explain it. It just makes it whole somehow. Um, but you do have to be careful when you're putting a video out to the public that you don't use copyright music. And if you do happen to do that by mistake, um, then a copyright claim is filed against you. So I have quite a big library and I'm still actually building it as we speak because I've just found some more um, CDs that I bought years ago with non-copyright music on which I'm copying into my current system to use. Um, but when you're out and about and recording things, you don't always know that you're picking up copyright music with your microphone and I've had a copyright claim against me twice in the last uh, seven or eight years I've been doing YouTube. The first one was actually on the Marina Door video diary where I was filming down in the main gardens near the big hotels and there was a band on the stage and they were really only there for background I didn't feature them but the uh, and, and actually the, the song they were playing I'd never heard before and uh, I just thought it was some nondescript music that didn't mean very much. Unfortunately, a company in New York didn't agree. And it happened again only a couple of months ago. Uh, we were in, if you remember, uh, a hilltop restaurant that's fished off in Bulgaria. And I, t I did actually mention, I hope you can hear me above the background music that's playing. Unfortunately, I later discovered when I launched the video onto YouTube, the background music that was playing uh, was copyright and I shouldn't have used it and I had a copyright claim filed against me. <laughs> so that's something to watch out for if you're on YouTube.
Okay, I'd like to finish here with um, a camera that I use a lot, uh, which doesn't follow any of the, the basic rules because it's got a life of its own. Now this bit here, let me bring it a bit closer, this bit here is the camera. These little cameras were designed for drones and this has been mounted on a gimbal. Now this is the gimbal here and the gimbal gives you stability which you couldn't otherwise get. So normally when you walk around with a video camera and you do that, which um, some people do, uh, you will get terrible pictures and the people viewing them won't be able to see what's in them. This smooths out so much of that because um, it stabilizes it. It's a three axis gimbal. You can move the selfie stick around and the camera will remain reasonably stable. Um, what it can't apparently deal with, and you need a more, far more professional device to, to do this, is get rid of the sort of rock and roll movement of the body. So I took some footage with this at Barcelona station and I walked around the market stalls outside. Now there's no real camera shake or wobble, but you do have this rolling motion which comes from my walk. So unless I can glide along the pavement, and uh, I know uh, some young girls who've got the, the right equipment for doing that, but I'm not going to risk wearing them. Um, so you do get a bit of rock and roll, but you'll have noticed over the years that I quite often walk through the middle of crowds and I get some pretty decent footage. The other thing is, because this is what it is, and if, if I'm holding it like that way around, um, and I hold it down by my waist, not many people realise they're uh, being filmed, because I just walk past them with this running. So, one of my most popular videos over the years on YouTube has been the uh, Langothlan uh, Fairy Festival, it takes place every August, and the comments from there were, uh, it was amazing how you seem to weave in and out of the crowd effortlessly. who don't know the Marina d'Or complex, uh, it runs alongside the main north to south coastal railway line between Barcelona and Alicante and beyond. And the last time I walked on this particular piece of land, this is just a narrow strip from the apartments to the railway, I was using this, which is a full HD camcorder, um, and that was the state of the art at the time. One of the things that I don't seem to be able to get right is going back on things to, to recap. Quite often you'll see a video I've put up and it says more on this later or back in a few months or something like that. So 
in 2019 I hope to make amends for that because I'm gradually building up the library of stuff that uh, I've filmed over the years and uh, I can see which ones that I meant to follow up and never did. And this piece of land is just one of those. It used to be beautifully landscaped. People used to walk their dogs along here. And then suddenly they started digging this up and buried these huge pipes which were the water supply for Oropesa, which is that way. The desalination plant is that way. I have actually photographed that recently, the first time since it was completed. Uh, what happens to this piece of land now? For years after the desalination plant was built, it's remained a bit scrappy, but I can tell you now from what <laughs> I've experienced that this has actually been flattened and cleared and the trees that used to blossom here are being encouraged again. So we're going back, hopefully, to a nice piece of landscape land. And I've already seen people walking their dogs along here when I've been going back and forwards to the supermarket, which is the way I normally go along the back here by the railway. Uh, you can be a train spotter here too. <laughs> There's a bridge just down there which you can look over the track and watch the high-speed trains going backwards and forwards at 200 kilometers an hour, if you're interested. So just behind me here, the block of apartments I live in, the football field that I can see from my balcony, nothing playing there today. Um, this tree obviously didn't survive. Back on the subject of catching up with things, even though I'm here in Spain, I have to make sure that my projects in the UK are still running. This is um, my house of multiple occupancy, my HMO, and earlier in the year I showed you what was room two, which we uh, did up and created a feature wall, because that's what I'm told we need to be doing these days. We're now working on room one, which is an ensuite room, and we've used a different feature colour. I think we're going to experiment with the colours, because I'm not sure that we got it right last time with the one called Mocha. Um, some people were less than <laughs> generous in their description of that colour. So we're going for a grey. Everything seems to be going grey at the moment, so... including me. And then we're going to get some aggregate and uh, the aggregate we're going to buy is for a house in Elstree Avenue. And then we're still cleaning out that house in Flintshire, the, the one that was pretty derelict. I've just had new floors. Uh, showing you video of cleaning going on isn't very exciting, we won't bother with that. And just to prove that this is a railway line, that train's a regional express, it's a stopping train. And back at home we're still working on our bungalow. Frank Colin has been putting down some wooden flooring in the hall. I think that just about rounds it up for December. It's been a growing thing, the Maythorpe Monthly. It started at the beginning of this year and it's been evolving as the year goes on. Uh, what I intend to do in January, because every other broadcasting organisation under the 
and does it, is do our best of. We'll have a look back over 2018 with some of the video clips that we've given you, and on the 5th of January we'll bring you all that. Which basically means it's something I can do before Christmas and forget about, and just sit back with my feet up. That's why they do it at the BBC and ITV and places, you know. So anyway, just for old time's sake, I'm going to put myself onto the old full HD camera and wish you all a very Merry Christmas, have a great time, see you in the new year. I'm not too dizzy watching this.